Welcome to the first MLG AMA session. You guys had the chance to ask me questions in the community tab section and I'm going to answer the top voted of them today. Not sure yet if I'm going to make a bi-weekly series or monthly series out of it. We will see how well you guys respond to it. So the first question is from Orochi. You've said multiple times how your rise to fame wasn't luck, but skill. So I would like to see you explain it since I'm not really interested in guides, which is sad, and more interested in the YouTube stuff. Okay, so um, the first thing many people need to understand is making a YouTube channel blow up is pretty simple if you understand one concept and that is called drafting. Has nothing to do with the Mobile Legend draft, of course. Um, the example I could use here is when you're driving, I don't know if you've ever seen um, pro cyclists driving a race. They're usually not driving alone. There's always someone in the front and many people in the back. They are driving behind that guy because they don't have to face all the wind. They're drafting behind that first guy. And this is basically the same thing what you have to do on YouTube if you want to blow up a channel. Um, this basically means like there's one guy who's running in front, who's already very, very successful, who did some amazing content and you're not going to steal it, of course, but you're taking your ideas from here and from there and from there and you mix them all together and make your own spin with it to create something new. So um, when I started my channel first, I was doing a lot of guide hero guides because I thought, okay, there are not so many nice hero guides out there, especially none with voiceover. So people can find my channel when they yeah, search for the hero guides. It worked somewhat. I got a few views with that, but nothing really like too major. So, and what I basically did then was looking what the top channels on YouTube were doing at the time or which very successful videos the best Mobile Legends YouTubers were doing at the time. And not even just Mobile Legends YouTubers. I also looked at League of Legends, Dota YouTubers to get like a very big picture of what is working very well on YouTube. So when we have a look at Betoski's channel, for example, I was looking at the most popular videos at that time. And when you scroll down a little bit, you found this video. Avoid doing these 10 noob mistakes. If anyone was watching my channel already like two years ago, this might seem very similar to you. Because if we look at my channel, take the most popular videos. The second one is don't do any of this noob mistakes to rank up fast. Hmm. Where do you think I got this idea from? Of course, I just didn't steal word for word what Bitoski was saying, but I took my inspiration from this because I saw, okay, this is a very popular video. This seems to work very well. So I make a similar video, make it with my own spin, with my own personality, with my own tips and see how it goes. It went very, very well. The very first video that really made my channel blow up was this one. The best heroes in Mobile Legends season 21. And if you were watching Bitoski for a longer time, he was doing always these kind of videos in the beginning of every season. He's still doing it. I'm still doing it. The goal with this video was basically to be the first one who made this video. That's why I released this video. I think it was the first or second day of that season. So I'm in the top ranking in the search because when the new season starts, many people search. Okay, who's currently the best hero for this season? That's why I could get many, many views with that. Another thing that I did in this video, or I think, no, this was not this video. This was the Noob Mistakes video. In the Noob Mistakes video, I was doing something that is called you lead. In the end of the video, you're always trying to lead your viewers to the next video. So they are binging your videos because this is something the YouTube algorithm really, really loves. And I have this video. Test your knowledge. Can you carry this? This was a game where, the, where I did it the first time where I asked the viewer questions on the current game situations. This video idea, for example, I got from a LOL channel called Pro Guides. You see where I'm going with this, right? You take ideas from other channels, from things other people have made already, make your own spin, make something own out of it and become successful. It's pretty simple. And I'm not the only one who's doing it. When we look at Kazuki's channel, for example, he does many videos that I have done already. For example, recently, which I saw, where was it? Here, 
Volgura game to best MOBA game, the history of Mobile Legends. When you look at the thumbnail where he is pointing at the boobs and everything, and you look at my most popular video from over one year ago, which is this one, you might see where he got the idea to make this video and you might see where he got the idea to create the thumbnail. Um, he also made a video with all fighter weaknesses about one and a half months ago after I did it. So you see make all fighters cry. Here's the make all fighters cry which was released on July 26, 2021. And then we also have all 25 fighters and their weaknesses on the 16th of August 2021. It could have been coincidental, but since I already saw many uh, videos that I already did on his channel, I'm pretty sure he saw, oh, that video got a lot of views that went very successful for a relatively small channel in that time. Maybe I should do the same. Um, you also have examples, for example, someone who recently was blowing up. So more recently, you also have this channel which blew up, which is Code Rico. And here, for example, every XP laner should do this. XP laner guide, a jungler guide, a roam guide. Hmm, seems very familiar when you ask me. When I look at my channel, I have the ultimate marksman guide. I have the ultimate jungler guide. The ultimate, okay, in this case, it was don't do this 10 mistakes, but it's basically also a fighter guide. And since he's a subscriber of mine, I could imagine where he got this idea from. He's doing the perfect example of drafting right now. Which is, by the way, totally fine. I'm not saying that it's forbidden, that you should never take anything from anyone that anyone have done already, because then almost all of the videos that I did, I couldn't do any of them because everyone already did gameplay videos. Everyone did guide videos. Everyone did lore videos. Okay, lore videos, not so much, but yeah, lore videos I could have done maybe, but other than that, I couldn't have done anything. So there's nothing wrong with getting ideas from other channel and make your own spin with it. You just have to see what to take. You shouldn't take very un unsuccessful videos as drafting videos, of course. You should take something that is a... Uh, that is relevant for a wide audience like yeah coach rico is doing which is perfect plus his videos are super super entertaining with his memes so i really enjoyed watching them they were like really awesome i was really surprised a channel with three videos can make this kind of videos plus he's a danish guy he's basically my neighbor so if you're seeing this what's up mate the one thing that is really challenging though is staying relevant having always new ideas to get ton of views this is the very hard part blowing up the channel is not really hard in my opinion and i see for this thing i already talked 11 minutes and you're just lucky that i probably cut out many of these things so yeah second question is from gnome who also loves to write trivia facts and all kind of things in my comments which is really nice so thanks for doing that and he wrote more than one question so it's basically a quick fire which i also like to answer will you finally complete at least one series now I will definitely finish that gameplay series because I just enjoy it way too much. And although the views are not so good if you compare it to my guide videos, I'm just having a really fun time doing them. And I really love to see the videos after an editor was going over it. And yeah, I will definitely finish this series. Any plans to play other game, make another channel for other games? Currently not, I just don't have the time for it, to be honest. I'm working around 70 hours per week, sometimes 80, since I still have my full-time job as well, so there's no freaking way. Uh, do you have some sort of collab in mind, if any? Um, not really reaching out to people to do collaborations, to be honest. Um, I was trying for one video to reach out for some collaborations, which horribly failed, to be honest. Um, I did a few collabs. I did a collab with Isoya multiple times, DB Streamer, Dbringer Streams. This is the weird word. Uh, was in one of my videos but other than that um not really planning to do collaborations because yeah sometimes hard to reach out for people i have the feeling like it's not like you have like a close mobile legend community where the big creators have like a group where they're all the time chatting with each other um uh, what is your opinion on this skins in mobile legend adventure since i'm not really playing mobile legend adventure i have no freaking idea the one time i saw it i just saw a bunch of big melons i think i'm not allowed to say the other word um any suggestions on how certain things should be changed within ml 
like in-game chat censorship or matchmaking ideas. My idea that I'm pitching since over two years, which I was already pitching to Moonton as well multiple times, create a functioning guide section, like teach the people how to play your game inside of the game. Like you have so many people who just enjoy playing the game, but they don't really know how to play it correctly. And they often don't really understand why their allies are calling them noob because yeah, they don't know it any better. They play the game for fun because probably they are casual players. So make a section which is very easy and accessible to make it easier for people to learn the game. There are so many content creators out there who would love to help Moonton doing that. Like here, yeah, me, I would love to create the whole section, no problem, I would do it for them. But yeah, Moonton is not really interested in that. The next question is from Faisaus. What is your opinion on the upcoming UI revamp? Um, I saw that some people didn't really like it. I actually don't mind it. Like I remember when the first UI revamp was coming, which is the current UI. Firstly, I wasn't like too much of a fan of it, but once you get used to it, you just realize and you look back at how it looked before, then you just really realize like, oh, okay, it's actually really better. Um, so I don't really mind it until now everything that I saw. Um, also, what things should be changed or to improve the game? You have watch I just talk. A guide section, um, more involvement from the content creator, which is like a very, from my point of view, change that would help. Um, listening to the community, like for example, the emblem system where they say it's too complicated. Yes, without any guides, without any help inside of the game. This is very, very complicated, especially for casual players who just casually play the game, which is totally fine. Without casual players, the game would be pretty empty. So it's okay that there are casual players, but you need to take them on the hand very easily, very simple and tell them, okay, look, this is how it works. This is how you have to do it correctly. Very, very simple. You don't have to get into super big details that you need to reach mythical glory or that you need in the pro scene, like all of this kind of stuff that you need to know. Just like you need to explain the basics. So even like new things like the emblem system is actually actually working. Next we have the question from Gabriel. I'm not saying the second name. What happened to the vote for the heroes based on the appearance survey that you said a year ago? Um, yeah, what I can say is some part of the video was actually being produced. Um, the thing was just in that time I was overwhelmed with work that I couldn't really finish to produce that video because this was a long, huge ass video because I wanted to talk about every hero's appearance for at least one minute having like, I don't know how many heroes we had at that time, 115 heroes. So almost two hours talking with a script, not just freestyle with the script. That was a lot, a lot, a lot of work. And I wanted to publish also normal content. So this was basically a task. It was too much for me, although I think this idea is still very, very good. Same thing, for example, if anyone remember, this goes for the hero guides that I wanted to make. Um, I got some hero guides even finished, which were many of them were really, really awesome. Um, but I could never really go into production simply because I didn't really have the time in this time and I didn't have, yeah, I can also say I didn't really have the motivation in that time because in that time I was really thinking about, okay, what do I want to do? Do I want to keep pushing for YouTube, which I'm doing now, which you can really see. I'm really pushing my YouTube channel now because this is something I want to push really further to maybe one day that I can actually do this as my regular job. Um, but in that time, I was really questioning it and was not in the best mental health state, uh, which is why I couldn't really keep up with it. Uh, also a reason why, for example, I stayed away from the Discord blah, from the Discord server because this was taking so much time that I couldn't really focus on creating content. And that's a reason why I really stayed away from the Discord server because this is a distraction I, I couldn't take at the time and still cannot take at the time. I need to stay focused on the limited timer that I have because I have a family, I have my full-time job. I only really have my limited time that I have to organize and in this time I have to be as productive as I can for my content to make my YouTube channel work. So um, that's why many projects that I planned didn't work out as I wanted them to be. Also because I underestimated how much work even all the organization can be with so many people because I, I've never done that before, of course. So um, that's why also like that's becoming a running joke. Will you finish a series? Yeah, this time I will finish a series because I was 
before I started the series, I was thinking, okay, how can I make a series work with the limited time that I have? Okay, I just record a live gameplay. I'm not analyzing any matches. Pure live gameplay. That works easily. I can produce an episode in about one hour. I I'm doing some cuts here and there. Some heroes I have to train, like for example, Gushin is coming soon. This hero I had to train because I never really used Gushin. And I didn't want it to be the complete worst noob in the world with him as well. Like with Dyroth, for example, who I never really played Dyroth. I jumped after two matches into that, missed all my ults. Yeah, I never really played it before. What do you expect? I'm not a mobile legend god, you know? So, um, but this is also a learning like the heroes I didn't really play. I have to train a little bit more to be good and not to trigger people um and yeah i just ran way too far where i didn't even want it to go but now you know what happened to all this series and yeah next question is from safik i hope i pronounced that correctly which is also the most voted question so you won question of the day you're getting a virtual cookie <laughs> Uh, can we see the whole family playing MLBB while you try to manage them and add some puns every time something bad happens? Um, so, as you know, I have a wife who was playing Mobile Legends. Currently, she's not really playing Mobile Legends. I have a daughter who's playing sometimes Mobile Legends versus the AI. Um, one interesting... Actually, this comment made me think of an idea. Um, in July, I'm actually flying to the Philippines to visit my Filipino family. Um, since my wife has seven siblings and they also have already children and all kind of stuff. So there will be a very, very big family gathering and many of them are also playing Mobile Legends. Um, so I already had the idea that I will, um, how to say it in English, uh, put their screens on the computer screen so I can see what all five of them who are playing are doing right now and that I can basically life coach them what they're supposed to do. I also had the idea of playing a 1v5 against them to destroy them with 1-1 one, one and all kinds of funny challenges that we could do that will be very different from my usual content, but I think that will be very, very fun. So there's definitely something going to happen in, yeah, July to August. The next question is from Giat. What is your favorite hero for each rule? Except 1-1. One, one. Okay, except 1-1. One, one. Okay, I'm not going for fighter marksman i go for the lane so let's start with the xp lane i'm struggling a little bit between ruby and badang but since badang is still the most played hero in my account i would think i have to say badang also because he is in my opinion still a good a decent xp laner and yeah he is still a very very fun hero so i would say badang for the xp lane Mid lane is definitely Kadita because she's the hero I spam the most in the mid lane because my wife is playing mid lane usually so I would even say mid lane is my weakest role simply because in the first yeah one and a half years where I played Mobile Legends I was never playing mid lane because this was the main role for my wife. As Roma I would say it's Atlas simply because I really really like his old combo. Although I also really enjoy Lolita. Since I picked up Lolita for a couple of matches, I really, really enjoyed her as well. Since I'm playing mostly solo queue, I'm honestly avoiding the roaming rule, especially as long as I'm in the lower ranks. Um, in the higher ranks, I spam mostly Atlas and Ruby in Rome, but Lolita would be another hero that would be good. So these three heroes, you can say, are my favorite roamers. In the jungle, the most played hero is probably Hellcurt, because when I was starting with Mobile Legends, Hellcurt was still the super OP hero. I probably would still say that Hardy is my most favorite jungler, because I also have the, I think I have like a... Uh, almost 80% win rate with him, I would say, which is very, very good playing only in solo queue. Um, so I would probably say Hardy and Hellcurt. And for the gold lane, whenever I was not able to play 1-1, one -one, I would say Brody is my favorite. Strong ultimate, similar to 1-1. One -one. This is something that I think I really like. Um, Ah, another jungler that I forget, who's not really a jungler, but Jawhead. I really love playing Jawhead in the jungle because he's so strong in the early game. Uh, you can really dominate the first five minutes of the game and then you just have to hope that your teammates are not completely headless chickens and threw away this advantage. Um, and the second question, what other MOBA do you think is going to success more than MLBB? 
Uh, honestly, I have no idea since I'm not really keeping up with other MOBAs simply because I don't have the time. Like, I hope MLBB will stay as relevant as it is now because this is the MOBA I'm very familiar with. And honestly, I don't really have the time to get super familiar with another MOBA next to my day-to-day -day work and everything else. So I just hope for the best until now that Mobile Legend is staying relevant. The next question is from Saitama. What happened on your first main hero and why did you change it? So the first main that I had was actually Hilda because she was a free hero when I started back then. And I changed her to Uranus because my wife was playing Uranus at that time, who was very, very strong. And I still remember the first match that I had with Uranus and I just completely sucked with him because I had no freaking idea how to play him. I was a super, super, super big noob. I had no idea about his region effect. I still remember it because I was like, why should I play this stupid hero? He has nothing. He has no uh, He has no damage. He has no regen. He has no nothing. I thought he has no regen because I didn't understand how, to, how he's working. So yeah. And then I switched it to Badang because I had many Badangs who I played against who were just like very, very good. And that's why I switched my main to Badang. Do you still play 1-1 a lot even with a nerf she got? Yes. I, with my other account where I'm not doing my rank up series, I was spamming her to escape Epical Glory first and had a 100% win rate and 100% MVP rate. So, although one match was with Brody, but still. 11 matches, 11 times MVP. So... 1-1 one, one is still completely OP in my opinion because yeah, one old the whole enemy team is dead when you're farmed. So it's as simple as that. Next question is from Fried Cheesy Chicken. Are you planning to visit any Southeast Asian countries, especially those countries who are good in ML? In ML. Um, yeah, as I said, in July I will visit the Philippines for four weeks. Um in the first two weeks, I will be more relaxing, doing actual holiday. The second two weeks are more plans being Mobile Legend work related, to be honest. Uh, no promises, but I try to make a whole rank up series, what I'm already doing now, on the Filipino server, just to see also how hard the Filipino server actually is. Many people say the uh, Southeast Asian countries are more harder to play in than, for example, in Europe or in NA. And I want to test that out if that's really true. Um, but also to have like a change in the series that I'm doing this rank up series in the Philippines. And most of you are, or at least 30% of you are from the Philippines. Um, which is like the most, how do I say it, the most people from one country, 30%. I hope you understand what I mean. Um, also, which team is your favorite team from the MPL Philippines and so on and so on? Um, I have to admit, I'm not keeping up too much with the pro scene simply because I'm too occupied with my stuff. If I, I could watch them and I plan to get into it simply because I also want to understand how 5v5 works better. Um, I'm not thinking I will ever become a pro player, but who knows? I was thinking about the idea of making an EU team uh, because in the EU we don't really have a pro scene, but I would like to push that a little bit forward. We have some content creators as well in Europe. Um, maybe we can make something work if anyone is seeing this. Drop me a message somewhere. Um, email, Discord, and yeah. Question number nine from JPR. How is it possible that even being German you have such a good use of English? Yes, I am German. Genau, ich bin Deutsch. Um, so, uh, one thing that made my English pretty good is that I'm working in IT companies since about 13 years now. I, I started to work in 2010 when I was 17. I started to work in an IT company and basically since then I was working in IT companies. Um, when you're working in the IT business, you need to speak some kind of English in almost every job. Um, when I was working in the gaming industry for three and a half years, I was working in the company that has English as a company language because we had many international colleagues. Um, my wife is Filipino. I had to speak English with her in the beginning because she obviously couldn't speak German. Um, 
and I was traveling around a lot as well. So yeah, basically since around, I would say since, since around eight years, I'm no longer 11 years, since 11 years around, I'm speaking about 50% German and 50% English. I mean, my English is not perfect. I'm still not knowing many words because I never really learned it like that much. It's just like, I know my words, how to say them and somewhat try to make my sentences work i always realize when i write scripts like i want to say something i don't know how to say it i have to turn on google translate first or now chat gbt which is helping a lot as well so um but yeah this is basically how i learned to speak english plus youtube watching english i i watch i would say 90 percent of the content i watch on youtube is actually english so that helps a lot of course and as last question we have Shanbis Gaming. How to work for you? You go into the description and fill out the form. Because I'm still searching for a new video editor again. Um, content creators are always welcomed as well. Or if you have any other idea how to help me, drop me a line. Important, you have to be allowed to work as a freelancer. I cannot hire you when you don't have some other kind of occupation because this will be illegal. Do it now! And if you're not interested to do that, you check out... See, now I'm leading you to the next video that you should binge watch so the algorithm loves me. You should check out this video where I was playing Hanabi because this didn't got as many views, but it was a really, really awesome match and very fun to watch. So you should definitely watch it. See! Oh, mother! Uh, my God.